Well, good morning and welcome once again to Sunday School from the First United Methodist Church in Brookhaven, Mississippi. I thank you for tuning in and hope that something we say today will inspire you in some way. The title of today's lesson is All Glory to God with an exclamation point. And the purpose of our lesson is to acknowledge the work of wisdom that compels us to give God alone the glory. First, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we acknowledge that all things come from you, including wisdom. We thank you, Father, for the way that you have blessed us. Father, we pray for this church. We pray for this community. We pray for all believers and those that don't believe that we might somehow do or say something that reaches some of them. Father, we acknowledge that we don't fully understand your ways or your mysteries, but we strive to seek wisdom and understanding. Thank you, Father, for the ways that you have blessed us and blessed our efforts to further your kingdom. We thank you, God, for the word that comes from you. Help us to live it out. In Christ's name we ask these things. Amen. So, for the last five weeks, four weeks, including today, we have examined wisdom. And wisdom has come to mean different things. Uh, we have to, we looked first at the curiosity of the Magi and how they found their way by the stars. And then we looked at the compassion and forgiveness of Joseph. Wow. What a story. And then we looked at the discernment of right and wrong that was given to Solomon last week. And this week, we see that Daniel's faith led him to understand that God would provide. And that's where we start our scripture today. First of all, in Proverbs, the second chapter. Now, at the very beginning of this unit of lessons, I encourage you to read the second Proverbs. I encourage you to go back and read it again. Pay close attention to verse 6 that we mentioned several times, and we will read it again now. Proverbs 2, 6 through 7. The Lord gives us wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He reserves ability for those with integrity. He is a shield for those who live a blameless life. And then we see the story in Daniel today, which is the subject of our lesson. Now we have to start. We can't look at the scripture of today and just pick up and go. We have to lay some groundwork. Now, most of you will know that Daniel was sent when Nebuchadnezzar captured Jerusalem. He selected certain young people to come to the court of, to his court and be instructed for three years to learn their language and learn their ways. And then he was to be used by the court. By the, by the administration of, of Nebuchadnezzar. And so Daniel did that. And you might remember that Daniel only wanted to eat vegetables and, and drink water in the beginning and that he, he talked the man that was in charge of them into letting him do that for 10 days and then examined them. And he did. And so he continued to let Daniel and the people that we better know is Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Uh, we will get to their Jewish names in a minute. But we saw that he continued to permit them to live a different lifestyle and give the glory to God. So we pick our scripture up there after Nebuchadnezzar has had a dream. And that dream has caused him 
concern because he didn't understand what it was or what it meant for the future. And so he asked his sages, these astrologers and, and learned people in his Chaldean community to it's tell him what his dream was and what it meant. Now he thought that these sorcerers and sages or whatever words you want to use to describe them, if they couldn't tell him what the dream was, then they certainly couldn't tell him what, what it meant. And so we see then that uh, this is where we are. And then when they couldn't, he gets furious and gives instructions to his chief executioner to kill them all. And this group would have included Daniel and his friends. So we pick our scripture up there. Second Daniel, Daniel 2, 14 through 30. This is a lot of reading, so bear with me. Then Daniel, with wisdom and sound judgment, responded to Ariok, the king's chief executioner, executioner, who had gone out to kill the Babylon sages. He said to Ariok, the king's royal officer, why is the king's command so unreasonable? After Ariok explained the situation to Daniel, Daniel went and asked the king to give him some time so he could explain the dream's meaning to him. Then Daniel went to his house and explained the situation to his friends, Hanah, Mishael, and Azariah so that they could ask God of heaven for help about this mystery in hopes that Daniel and his friends wouldn't die with the rest of Babylon's sages. Then in a vision by night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel. Daniel praised the Lord, the God of heaven. God's name be praised from, eternal, from age to eternal age. Wisdom and, mighty are, and might are his. God is the one who changes times and eras, who dethrones one king only to establish another, who grants wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those with insight. God is the one who uncovers what lies deeply hidden. He knows what hides in the darkness. Light lives within him. I acknowledge and praise you, my Father's God. You have given me wisdom and might, and now you have made known to me what, what we asked of you. You have made known to us the king's dream. So Daniel went to Ariok, the man who who the king had appointed to wipe out Babylon's sages, and said to him, Don't wipe them out. Set uh, the sages of Babylon. Bring me before the king, and I will explain the dream's meaning. Wasting no time, Ariok brought Daniel before the king, telling him, I have found someone from, from the Judean exiles who will tell you the, the dream's meaning to the king. In reply, the king said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, can you really tell me the dream I saw as well as its meaning? Daniel said to the king, sages, enchanters, dream interpreters, and diviners can explain the mystery he seeks, to the king, the mystery he seeks. But there is a God in heaven, a revealer of mysteries, who has shown Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the days to come. Now this was your dream. This was the vision you had in your bed. As you lay in your bed, your majesty, your thoughts turned to what will happen in the future. The revealer of mysteries has revealed to you what will happen. Now this mystery was revealed to me, not because I have more wisdom than any other living persons, but so that the dream's meaning might be made known to the king, and so that you might know the thoughts of your own mind. And this is the word of God for us, the people of God. And thanks be to God. That's in Daniel 2, 14 through 30. Now, if we were, went on, we could read about the other legends or stories that developed around, around Daniel. Now, this lesson centered around a particular dream. 
But I want to call your attention to some things that, that happened uh, before he went before the king. He was sure that God wouldn't let him that would, that would reveal these things to him. He was sure enough that he went to the king and said, give me some time. After the king had said, kill them all. Oh. And so then he says, he went home and he called his friends and he asked them to pray with him so that the dream might be revealed. And they did. And at night, in, his vision, in a vision, it was revealed. This mystery was, resolved, was solved. I want you to pay close attention to the fact that the mystery, because that can lead us into a line of thinking called Gnosticism, where we're thinking that something special has been revealed to us. What was revealed to, to, to Daniel was this one thing, but he didn't think himself special because of it. And then what does he do when he, when he realizes that the dream had been re revealed to him? He praised God. He broke out in a song that is considered to be from verse 20 through verse 23. It's three verses. It would do good for us to consider that again. So he praised God from the very as being from age to eternal age and being forever as the one who changes kings and eras. It took a lot of a lot of courage for him to say those words when he realized that they might get back to the king, and that when he told the king what was when he revealed his mystery to the king, it was with a position of confidence, but also one of courage that, that he had been given this wisdom. So we need to at least look at, at what was revealed to him. He was told that, that there was, he described a mighty statue, gold, silver, bronze, feet of, of iron and clay, and that a rock would rise up that would smash the feet and the body would fall over and be smashed to smithereens, as I would say, and blown away by the wind, and that this rock would grow to a mountain. This rock is Jesus Christ and the coming kingdom that will be established here on earth. So he explained all those things. He didn't name Jesus because he didn't know Jesus' name at the time. But he knew who God was and he knew that God was going to raise this up. So we see then that Daniel has, exempt, has, uh, has shown great wisdom. In verse 6 in Second Proverbs reveals the source of wisdom. But that's not the only place. If you read James chapter 1, verse 5, you will see that God gives us wisdom. And so we see all what happened in his dream. Let's look now at, at some of the uh, questions in the student book. But before we do, there's some points I want to be sure you we have made. Nebuchadnezzar had had a bad dream. He wanted someone to simply tell him what it meant and what he saw in his dream. Daniel was the only one who could do that. It's ironic because Daniel was not one of the king's sages. He was just a Jewish youth that had been put into training for three years to be able to do this. And so... He got mad. The king got mad when he when couldn't anybody interpret him. And so he sent out the word that he was going to kill them all. But he relented from killing all the sages and elevated Daniel to a place, a powerful position in the government. Wow. 
Daniel is a hero and an important to the Jewish folklore. This occurred during a time when the Jews were still in Babylon and were still being persecuted before the rise of King Cyrus who let them go back. And so it was a time of great great concern, great persecution. And so this was no doubt written, this, they believed that this was written about the years 167 to 163 B.C. And it was written, or hundreds of years after the fact, and it was written at a time when the Jewish people were again being persecuted, this time by the Syrians. And so they wanted, uh, this, this helped the stories of Daniel, helped them to understand that God was still there and he was still working on their behalf. Now, let's read a question or two from this student guy. In what ways and times and situation has God equipped you with unusual understanding, knowledge, or wisdom to resolve a problem or situation? Have you ever gone to bed at night with a problem on your heart? Or a problem that needed solving? Only to wake up in the morning with a clear head and a concise answer to your problem. I could very easily relate to you a story, but I don't want to, don't want you to think that it's that I'm have any precept of Gnosticism in my in my body. But when I was young, I went in a month's time from being responsible for only what I did to being responsible for a group of people, 10 to 12 people, and 165 lawsuits. And this was all dropped on me, just like you would turn on a water faucet. And I didn't know the answer to half the problems to solve all those lawsuits. It got so bad that I kept a notepad and pencil by my bed. Because I'm telling you, I would wake up in the night with a solution. It came to me in the night. And I, as I look back on my life, I know that had to be God helping me resolve some of these problems. But I don't think he gave me any special knowledge. He just used me to resolve the issues that were at hand. And I say that very, very reluctantly because I don't want to try to put too much emphasis on me, but more on God. And has God will reveal problems. So, in what ways and situations has God equipped you with an unusual understanding, knowledge, or wisdom to resolve a problem or solution? I hope you can point to times when he has done that. When you face an seemingly insurmountable situation or problem, what is your response? I hope it's to go to the Lord in prayer. Do you ask others to pray for you? This last year, I've gone through a fairly serious health issue. I have felt the prayers of those around me, and I thank them for it even right now. So, when have you seen the best of human achievement fall short of expectations? When have you seen the wisdom and power of God displayed in, dis in surprising ways? Each generation must face its own problems. We all have pushed, felt the push of different things on what we believe and how we believe. And so we have to ask for the gift of courage. What lessons does Daniel teach you about the wisdom of God's kingdom versus the kingdoms of this world? God's kingdom will not fail. It, I read the end, last chapter of the book. God wins in the end. 
So what lesson, what did Daniel teach you about God's kingdom? That God will provide, that God will sustain us, whatever our situation is. And now we'll read on page 99, our closing prayer. Dear God, give us wisdom and courage to face our hour of crisis, evil, and temptation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, folks, I feel that I must share with you that the time has come for this ministry to end in its present form. I want to thank you for watching and tuning in, and I pray for you, for those who who have watched so faithfully and ask that you continue to pray for me on my life's journey. Thank you.